friends, good morning. I'm Rabbi Joshua Davidson, Senior Rabbi of Temple Emmanuel, joined on the Mima by my colleagues, Rabbis Amy Ehrlich and Allison Kickrill, and Cantor Mo Glasman, accompanied by Joyce Rosenzweig, by Robert Silverman, the American Jewish Committee's National Director of Muslim Jewish Relations, Imam Shamsi Ali, President of the Nusantara Foundation, Chairman of the Al Hikmah Mosque in Astoria and the Imam and Director of the Jamaica Muslim Center, by Rabbi Dr. Alvin Cass, Chief Chaplain of the New York City Police Department, and by Rabbi Noah Marins, AJC's Director of Interreligious and Intergroup Relations. My gratitude especially to Rabbi Tick Brill and Mark Heidlinger from Temple Emmanuel. And Bob Silverman, Michael Schmidt, Eric Post, and their staff from AJC for organizing the logistics of this morning's memorial and walk. And as well to Sheikh Mohammed Duadar of the Islamic Society of Mid Manhattan and the Reverend Dr. Scott Black Johnston of Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church, who will greet us at the Masjid and Church, respectively. And we thank our partners in the Dewan Foundation. Cornell University's Muslim Alumni Association for their contributions. The Babylonian Talmud teaches that when the hour of Israel's liberation was at hand, Moses remembered the promise his ancestors made to carry the bones of Joseph out of the land of bondage. Indeed, the Israelites carried Joseph's casket upon their shoulders through the Red Sea all the way to Mount Sinai. From Mount Sinai, they bore it alongside the Ark of the Covenant with the tablets of the law. For 40 years, as the people made their way through the wilderness, they carried with them one Ark containing the bones of their patriarch and another containing the Ten Commandments. Travelers they encountered would ask them, what is contained in these two Arks you bear? The Israelites would reply, one contains the bones of the dead, and the other is a vessel for God's presence. And so the nations learned the wisdom of Israel. For the Israelites knew that in their pursuit of the future, they must always bear with them the memories of those who came before. <coughs> we too carry the memories of those who came before. This day especially, we remember the thousands killed 15 years ago at this hour, heroes and fellow citizens, Husbands and wives, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, children and grandchildren. In the days following 9-11, we learned their stories from the photographs on the subway platforms, from their obituaries in the papers, from our grieving friends. Stories we remember. We remember Abe Zelmanowitz of Queens, who worked on the 27th floor of Tower One, when the evacuation began, Abe refused to leave the side of his quadriplegic co-worker. The others who had pleaded with him to flee made it to safety. Abe and his friend were buried in the rubble, but not his example of what it means to value life and friendship. We remember Jeremy Glick and the others aboard Flight 93 from Newark, who overcame their terrorist hijackers crashed their plane in Pennsylvania farmland to prevent further tragedy in Washington. The passengers of that flight are gone, but not their example of bravery. We remember the hundreds of firefighters, police officers, and emergency and rescue personnel who perished saving others. Those who are trained to run toward disaster even as they pull, carry, and dig us away from it. They are gone but not the example of their courageous self-sacrifice. And we remember the thousands who were engaged in the quieter heroism of providing for their families and living their dreams. They were just like us. They are different only in that they are gone. At this sacred moment, we remember them all. And we do so as people of faith, in a gathering of communities who believe in religion as a force for peace and unity. How many skeptics conclude from the holy wars of the past or from the terrifying threat of extremism today that faith, far from revealing a path toward harmony, only generates strife? We reject such gross aspersion on our religious traditions. 
Churches and synagogues, temples and mosques offer a gospel the world needs to hear, that God stands with the victim, not the aggressor, that the same divine spark burns in each of us, that faith should ease human suffering, not cause it. As people of faith, we condemn the atrocities committed in its name. And to our Muslim brothers and sisters present and those who will join us later, we say, we stand in solidarity with you at a time when our national discourse has been infected by xenophobia and bigotry. It is impossible to divorce the brutal murder last month of Imam Akonji and his associate Thara Odin outside their Queens Mosque from the climate of anti-Muslim sentiment being stoked in America today. As Jews, immigrants in our own right, we speak in defense of the overwhelming majority of Muslims in this country who came to America for the same opportunities that our grandparents and great-grandparents came generations ago to create better lives for themselves and their children. We repudiate the facile equation of all Islam with the brutality of its most radical exponents. Muslims, too, perished on 9-11. This multi-faith commemoration, the 15th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, will involve brief ceremonies here at the Islamic Society of Mid-Manhattan and the Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church. We will pray together, mourn together, and walk together, continuing the journey we hope one day will lead to the world we seek, a world of shalom, salam, peace.